Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, your home for the most detailed motorcycle reviews on the net. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you appreciate this content. The KTM 690 Enduro R. Is this bike a dual sport bike or is it an adventure bike? Well, thanks to my friend Tim, who's loaned me this, his personal bike. Today, we're gonna ride this modified 690 Enduro to try to find out some of the answers about this bike. At about 350 pounds, fully fueled up, this bike is 120 pounds lighter than KTM's own 890 Adventure R, but it's also about 100 pounds heavier than KTM's 500 EXC or 350 EXC. KTM's big bore single cylinder engines, they go way back to about 1987 and they've always been codenamed the LC4. And in the past, especially with those earlier bikes, they were known for paint shaking, just devastating levels of vibration. However, this current LC4 engine in this updated 2020 and later 690 Enduro is a whole different ball game. It has twin counterbalancers and it makes 75 horsepower, making it the most powerful production single cylinder motorcycle engine in the world. With many riders finding even this current midsize adventure bikes really to be too heavy and too cumbersome, the 690 Enduro could be a perfect solution. This bike still has adventure bike twin cylinder levels of horsepower, but it has much reduced maintenance requirements and is a lot better on the highway compared to those smaller dual sport bikes. So I think our big question today is, is this modified adventurized 690 Enduro the unicorn dual sport slash adventure bike that people have been asking for for years? A bike capable of cruising at 80 to 90 miles per hour on the highway and still tackling difficult technical off-road terrain. To find out, we're gonna first take a tour of this bike, talk quickly about the specs and features, show you some of the modifications made to this bike to make it more of that adventure bike. Then we're gonna take it out on the highway, on the freeway, on the twisties, and of course we're gonna hit the dirt trails to see how this thing is off-road. Then we're gonna come back here to discuss the brutally honest pros and cons to this 690 platform, and then we'll have some final thoughts. So with that, let's get out for a ride. Let's take a look at the riding position and the seat height on the 690 Enduro. So a couple things about this bike. This bike is not stock. Number one, it has this wider seat concept seat, which makes the seat feel taller because it spreads your legs out. Number two, this bike has a lowering link and the forks have been dropped. So the whole bike has been lowered about an inch. Uh, so you've got those things, you know, to keep in mind. But anyway, let me just jump on and show you. Now, I am five foot 10, about 180 centimeters tall. I have a 32 inch leg inseam. So I'm a relatively tall person. And this bike is still tall, even for me. It's not a problem for me. I'm used to dual sports adventure bikes. They're all tall. Might 90 rallies, even taller than this. Um, so for me, it's okay. But you notice that I can't flat foot it. If I jump my, usually when I come to a stop, this is how I am. I slide my butt off and I can put a foot down to get a secure footing. But if I sit in the center of the seat, I'm on my tiptoes and I'm still a pretty tall guy. This is not a good bike for beginners or for shorter riders. It's gonna be very challenging in those conditions. But you can lower it a little bit and you can get lower seats and you could learn to live with it because it's not too heavy. But this is not really beginner friendly or short rider friendly in my opinion. Okay, so one of the whole points of the 690 if you're looking at it compared to heavier bikes is it's gonna be easier to pick up. Let's test that right now. So I put a blanket down because this is technically not my bike. Thank you, Tim. And I promise I won't scratch it too much. So let's lay this down and then pick it up. So I can definitely notice that it feels quite a bit heavier than a dirt bike when I'm doing this kind of thing, but it doesn't feel anywhere near like the bigger, heavier 400, 500 pound adventure bikes do. So now let me lift it up. It's really no problem at all. And I'm, I'm relatively fit, I'm relatively strong, but I think a lot more people would be able to lift this bike by themselves than they would, you know, those bigger multi-cylinder adventure bikes. 
All right, let's talk about the main specs of this bike and then we'll take you on a tour around this beautiful looking machine. So let's start with the engine. So what you're looking at here is KTM's LC4 engine. It's a 693cc four valve, single cylinder, li liquid cooled, uh, double overhead cam engine. It's putting out about 74 horsepower, which is astonishing if you think about it for a single cylinder bike. And that comes in around 8,000 RPM. Torque, you're looking at 54 foot-pounds of torque at 6,500 RPM. Now that's gonna be hooked up to a six-speed transmission with a quick shifter and a slip assist clutch. Let's take a look at the suspension and brake. So in the front, now you'll notice that this bike has been lowered, so you see the fork tube sticking out of the triple clamp here. Uh, it's a WP Explorer. Uh, fork. It's got 9.8 inches of travel and it's fully adjustable. So rebound, compression, adjustments. But there's no preload on this. So I guess saying fully adjustable is a little bit misleading. And then for braking, we have a pretty good size front disc brake here. And you have this Brembo brake caliper. The brakes are very strong, plenty of power for a motorcycle that only weighs 350 pounds. Let's move around, talk about the rear suspension and brakes. So the rear suspension, you of course have a rear mono shock, and the travel on the back, I believe, is the same as the front. It's 9.8 inches of travel, and you have adjustments for low speed compression, high speed compression, rebound, and preload. So really good adjustments on the back shock. You can see you've got a single rear uh, caliper on the back, which is normal. And then for tires, you're looking at a 140-80-18 rear tire. And on the front, of course, it's a 21-inch tire, and it's going to be a 90-90-21. This bike is wearing a little bit fatter, 90-121 Motos Tractionator Desert HT, which is an awesome tire for off-road, not so much for riding on the freeway. Fuel capacity. So the fuel capacity is 3.6 gallons, which is good for around 150 miles of riding uh, before you really need to look for gas. And our weight, we're gonna cover weight a lot through this whole video, but the fully fueled up weight, wet weight is around 350 pounds. Now let's talk about maintenance for just a second. That's something that we always try to cover in my videos nowadays. So for maintenance, KTM wants you to change the oil every 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers. In my opinion, I would not go 6,000 miles on a single cylinder engine between oil changes, although I'm sure you can, but personally I wouldn't, but that's what the spec is. They also want you to do a valve adjustment at 6,000 miles. So, so having to check those valves every 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers, that's a lot more often than an adventure bike, but it's a lot less often than a dedicated enduro bike would be where you're checking valves every one or 2,000 miles. The air filter is here under the seat, so that's pretty easy to get to. And in terms of overall ease of working on bikes, KTMs are easy to work on. They come apart and go together quite easily and they make things pretty accessible. Oil change is gonna be like an oil filter, an oil screen, not too hard to do. And it holds just under two liters of oil. Let's take a tour around this bike and talk about some of the features and also talk about some of the mods that this bike has. So starting with the Raid Garage fairing. This is a $1,500 addition. So it's not for the faint of heart, but what it does give you, it gives you, first of all, the styling, which I think is absolutely incredible on this bike, fits this bike so well. It gives you a lot more wind protection, wind deflection. So, you know, these are made for riding in rallies, but they also are good for adventure riding because they keep the wind off your torso. And of course, you've got these dual LED headlights up front with these kind of cool halo rings. So that's a pretty nice thing. Of course, we got a front fender here. We've talked about the brakes and suspension. Uh, the radiators are going to be uh, here on both sides, so under there. This bike has these T-Rex crash bars, which really look like part of the factory frame. You would think that they were factory, but these are aftermarket. I think that company did a really good job with those. You can see the fuel canister here. This is a skid plate. It says um, Molecule Motorsports is the brand. So I've never seen that one before, but really nice heavy-duty plastic skid plate. This has case savers on it, so that's kind of nice to protect the engine cases, so that's an aftermarket addition. This also has, it looks like, clean speed uh, uh, brake lever there, and aftermarket foot pegs, I don't know the brand, but they're pretty awesome. This bike is wearing the Tusk Olympus tank bag, which I always link in my videos. It has a Seat Concepts comfort seat, Tusk rear rack. Now, let's talk about the fuel tank. So, first let me turn the bike off so I don't kill the battery. Fuel tank is here. So you remove this cap here and you fill it up. So the, the rear frame of the bike is actually the fuel tank. You can see here. Uh, so 3.6 gallons and 
This, the nice thing about this is it kind of keeps the weight lower in the bike than if the, if the gas tank were kind of up here on a traditional motorcycle. It also allows more capacity than a lot of dual sport bikes have. There's some downsides to it. If you have luggage back here, if you have a tail bag, or if you have, you know, a duffel bag strapped up here doing a longer trip, you're gonna have to take that off to get to your gas cap. So that can be a little frustrating at times. Coming around to the back, this has the Rottweiler tail tidy, which is a very, very nice piece. Integrated turn signals and brake lights. Gets rid of all that stuff hanging off the rear end. That's a very nice piece, and I really want to get that for my 890 in the garage. This bike has a wings exhaust, which is very, very high quality and really comes in at a very good price point for what it is. It's titanium and you have a quiet insert spark arrestor, which is in this particular bike. Coming on here, you can see the, the drivetrain and sprockets. You can see all the dust. I've definitely been having some fun out there on the trails with this bike. You can see this bike has the factory uh, header pipes here and the slip on just starts at that point. Uh, not much else to talk about. Shift lever, kickstand. I would get a kickstand foot to enlarge that. And if I end up buying this bike, that's definitely something that I would do. Let's jump on here and take a look at the controls and the dash. So this bike has aftermarket double take mirrors, it has tusk handguards. This bike is set up. This thing is sweet. I gotta tell you, this thing, he's done everything to this. Um, so you've got your switches here for your headlights and your horn. Um, let's talk about this right now. So I have to turn the bike on. So this is gonna be your map and traction control switch. Uh, so what this is, oh, I got to turn the kill switch on here. So position number one is the road map, which is more aggressive auto response and more intrusive traction control for riding on pavement. If you hold this down, it will go into number two. That's off-road, which is a less aggressive throttle, and the traction control becomes much less intrusive. I absolutely love this traction control off-road, and you're gonna see why here in a minute when we ride it in the dirt. Now, you can turn the traction control off by holding this down for about five or six seconds, and it turns the traction control off. To turn the ABS on and off, you toggle it here with this button. And because this bike has the rally fairing, some of these things are not in the factory locations. He's also got a voltmeter here, which is a USB port. Man, he's really done so much to this bike. I'm gonna have to buy it. Um, another interesting thing on the 690s is the key is here, just uh, behind the steering head, which or behind the handlebar here, kind of where this tank bag is, kind of hard to see. Kind of interesting place to put the key. You've got normal switch gear over here. Nothing else too much exciting to talk about. Oh, we should talk about the dashboard. So you've got this basic, you know, dashboard odometer, um, you can do some different displays here, but basically you have, you know, a clock, you have some trip meters, and that's about it. You don't get anything like gear position, indicators, or thermometers, or fuel gauge. You don't get anything fancy like that on this bike, because it's more of that dual sport setup. All right, I'm back in a blazing hot desert. I can't tell you, I'm, I'm so ready for fall or winter. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit as I'm filming this right now, and I'm so sick of this heat. Anyway, ready for cooler weather. So one of the reasons that I ended up getting rid of my previous uh, 690 Enduro, my 2018 model with the older engine, was because when I took it on at higher speeds at 65, 70, 75 miles per hour, or over about, over about 110 kilometers per hour, the vibration was horrible, and it was a deal killer for me. I didn't want to own that bike because it didn't, it didn't run smoothly on the freeway. So let's find out if this new 690 with the new updated twin counterbalance motor uh, is better. So let's jump on the freeway, and then when we're done, we're going to get back to the mountains as soon as we possibly can. Otherwise, I'm going to die of heat stroke. So... Shifters, pretty smooth. Yeah, these tires are a little bit wobbly with these rain grooves. These are really aggressive off road tires. They don't like the freeway very much, so I'm going to have to be careful of that. But so far, I have to say, keeping up with traffic here, which is actually running kind of slow today, 75 miles per hour, whatever that is in KPH, I'll put down below. And uh, yeah, no, no issues. Um, the engine, and I, of course I've tested this before filming this video. Wow, that's really bad with that wobble. But that's just that front tire. Um, 
anyway, let's pick it up a little bit. Yeah, there's 85 miles per hour, 86, 90 miles per hour. And there's a little bit of buzz coming through the bars, but you know, if someone if someone didn't know this was a single cylinder engine, you might think it was a twin cylinder based on just how smooth it runs at these high speeds. The difference between this and the previous 690 Enduro is so dramatic, I can't even tell you. Like this thing is like butter at uh, these higher speeds compared to the old one. Now a lot of dual sport bikes, pretty much any dual sport bike that I've done this to, like this 80 mile per hour kind of freeway stuff is if you can even go that fast it's miserable and you just want to get off as fast as you can but with this bike assuming that I changed out these tires or something different um, I would have no problem running the freeway you know on a longer trip on this bike maintaining these higher speeds so it kind of passes the unicorn test in this regard in terms of uh, being able to handle very high speed cruising and this bike does have the stock gearing by the way just in case you were wondering and if i were to try to do that kind of a run or that kind of travel at, at more at longer distances uh, with something like a 500 exc or a 350 exc uh, if they could even do those speeds which sometimes they struggle to do those speeds with the gearing there would be so much vibration the bike would just feel like it was going to fly apart but with this bike it doesn't feel that way at all and so that's why the 690 is so unique because you have a bike that can do super legitimate like hard off-road stuff but then you can still do quite a bit of highway travel almost with the comfort and smoothness of an adventure bike but that's the key word almost it's not it's not perfect all right now let's see how this bike does on twisty two-lane roads I'm very happy to be getting back into the mountains again. All right, we've got the bike in street mode on the mapping. We've got traction control on, ABS on. god dude like how would this thing be with street tires like if you set this up with like a supermoto setup oh my god this thing would be just heaven on these roads as it is with the knobby tires it's still very good it's just the knobbies are holding me back right um but the chassis the handling the agility the brakes the power band the quick shifter the transmission everything comes together uh, to really give you a, a great a great riding experience now of course this bike has all these modifications on it which changes it a lot you've got some wind protection here from the fairing uh, you've got uh, you know a more comfortable seat I've got you know hand guards I've got some different things so this is not totally stock but even the stock ones which I've ridden are still very good at doing this kind of stuff the engine seems to really pull really well at pretty much any RPM. I mean, being a single cylinder, if you lug it down too low, yeah, you can get it to you can get it to kind of vibrate and chug. But don't ask too much from a single, you know. They don't like to be lugged down super super low. But then this thing revs out and it has just so much power. And because this motorcycle is so light, it just contributes to a feeling of sportiness and agility. <laughs> it's easy to get going real fast on this thing. So this Raid Garage fairing, you know, this is not a review of this of this product, but it dumps the wind about halfway, maybe two thirds away up my helmet. And it does a really good, a surprising job of keeping the wind off my torso. I get the wind on my shoulders and of course the top of my helmet, but this is a pretty great modification for this bike and really, really extends this bike's ability as more of that adventure touring bike. 
of course it is a rally tower so you can put navigation road books gps's and uh, switches whatever you want on this this is made out of carbon i have to say it's a pretty damn cool product another observation i i do have about this machine is that because it's kind of that more dirt bike chassis you definitely feel like you're sitting way up on top of it so even with the rally fairing that this bike has i still feel like i'm way up in the air kind of riding up on top of the bike and that's very different from most adventure bikes where you feel like you're sitting down inside the bike it's not really like a good or a bad thing it's just a, it's just a very different feeling that i i wanted to point out all right let's get the 690 enduro off-road and see how this thing is on the trail so a couple things we're going to do first we're going to put on our gloves safety first so i'm going to put the bike in the off-road map setting so to do that i hold down this map button here until two flashes now two is lit up now i'm going to leave traction control on and the reason I do that is because in map number two, the traction control is off-road traction control. So it's much less intrusive. It allows you to slide the tire a bit and have some spin, but not so much spin that you go out of control. I'm a fan of it. I like the system. But, of course, if you want to get really rowdy, then turn it off and you can slide and spin the tire all you want. <laughs> so the fact that my camera is flying everywhere is testament to this bike's off-road credentials it really is on trails like this more of that dual sport or dirt bike feel albeit a big dirt bike versus an adventure bike so what do i mean well it's 100 pounds lighter more than 100 pounds lighter than my personal 890 adventure r and I notice it right away. You can ride this faster than those big adventure bikes. The suspension is very, very good for a factory suspension, just like you would expect from, you know, one of KTM's high-end models. <laughs> this is not a cheap bike, right? So you expect it to have really good components now I hate to already start with the criticisms but there's a couple things on this trail the gearing is okay but one thing that I really don't like about the 690 is the gear ratios are just weird so first gear is super super tall and it's too tall for serious like single track work first gear goes up to like 30 miles an hour and it doesn't allow you to really have great super low speed control you can do it but it's not as good as you know a smaller enduro bike would be of course one of the advantages of that is like we saw on the highway you can you can really cruise at those higher speeds but I'd like to see, you know, uh, I'd like to see more spacing between the gears, so more of a wider ratio instead of what feels like this is kind of a narrow ratio transmission. I don't like that. <laughs> Little jump there. Well, this thing, this is like the perfect kind of trail <laughs> for this bike right here. Like kind of a rutted out, like two track, fire road, jeep road kind of thing. This is what the 690 really is in its element doing. If you get into really technical riding, it still feels kind of big and you've got that tall gearing and it's still 100 pounds heavier than a dirt bike. But there's no denying the fact that this is more fun to ride than the big heavy adventure bikes in the dirt. And it gives you a lot more confidence, assuming that you have the riding experience 
and you're tall enough not to be intimidated by the height of the bike and you're not intimidated by the power of it um, this thing really rips on stuff like this Another criticism I have, and this might just be the way this bike is set up, but the handlebars, when I try to stand up, when you stand up on a dirt bike, um, you want to, you, you know, your hands are supposed to be kind of in front of your, in front of your shoulders, right? But this bike, the bar sits back in my lap and it's very, <laughs> the bar is way too far back, but I think that's just an adjustment on this particular bike. You see how I can open the throttle all the way and this off-road traction control what it does is <laughs> it lets me uh, slide quite a bit but it but then it keeps me in check so I'm a huge fan of it I really think those of you who are skeptical about traction control off-road need to give this a try <laughs> this is genuinely a hoot. <laughs> Don't hit that rock. Don't hit that rock. God, this bike's fun. <sighs> These damn mirrors. Maybe I just been haven't riding I haven't been riding dual sport bikes enough lately. I forgot how much fun they are. God this thing is so good. I could never ride this trail this fast on a big adventure bike. Even my own 890, there's just no way. There's just no, you can't cheat physics. You can't make up for that hundred pound weight difference. I'm just so conflicted about what this bike is. I don't know. Like if I own this bike, would I would I set it up as like more of an enduro bike or would I set it up as an adventure bike? I don't know which direction to take it. Now the truth is this trail I'm riding, you could do this on a 1200 GS. Now would it be as much fun? No, absolutely not. Would you be riding as fast? No, but you could make it. And 1200 GS or an 890 Adventure is a hell of a lot better at carrying luggage and weight and passengers and you know traveling long distances things like that so everything's a trade-off you just have to choose what priorities you have dude I don't know if you guys can tell but I'm having an absolute blast doing this and this is uh this is not what I really wanted to be honest because my friend Tim whose bike this is he's actually selling this bike because he's moving and I've been thinking about buying it and I've been telling myself no I'm not gonna buy it because I've got an 890 and I'm, and I'm planning to add like a smaller, uh, a new dual sport, like a 500 DXC or something like that. But man, every time I ride this bike, like today, I'm just like, I don't know, maybe I should buy it. It's, it's pretty darn good. Anyway, uh, so off-roading, we've kind of talked through the pros and the cons of this bike. It's super legit off-road. Just don't expect it to take the place of a dedicated uh, trail bike or hardcore dirt bike. Don't expect that and you'll be fine. about you guys but I've never ridden a single cylinder motorcycle that can accelerate like this there's just there's just nothing like it for a single cylinder engine now the bike does start to feel a little bit a little bit uh, unstable maybe like getting above about 90 miles an hour um, but we have super aggressive knobby tires and that's going to be part of it uh, but I also think that the 690 in general in my opinion has always been a little bit a little bit strange with its handling just because of the fuel the fuel being in the back I don't know I could be wrong about that 
All right, well, we're back from that ride. My adrenaline, I'm still kind of fizzing from that ride. I was just having so much fun riding this machine. So let's talk about the pros and cons to the 690 Enduro. Now, before we go any further, just real quickly, if you go back to the very early days of my channel when I really had no idea what I was doing making videos, uh, I reviewed my personal 2018 690 Enduro. And long story short, I ended up eventually selling that bike uh, because for me, it just didn't do anything particularly, particularly well. It wasn't great off-road, it wasn't great on the street, but mostly on that bike, I found that the, the vibration from the engine from that previous version of the LC4 was just too much for me. On the, on the freeway, I felt like my whole body was just like a dentist drill. I just couldn't take it. So that's why I ended up getting rid of that bike. So I just wanted you to have that background. So one of the things I love most about this updated 2019 and later 690 Enduro or Husky 701, which is essentially the same bike with different bodywork. Now keep in mind that KTM pretty much completely redid the bike in 2019. Uh, some people have said, oh, it's just like a refresh. No, like the frame's different, the engine's all different, the suspension's different, the electronics are new. It's a whole different bike, even though it might look the same. So keep that in mind. We really cannot compare this to the previous model. This is such a better motorcycle in every respect. All right, so finally, what are the pros? Well, we've kind of gone through this in the review, so I'm, I'm gonna gloss over these a little bit. The engine, I find the engine to be astounding on this motorcycle. 75 horsepower from a lightweight single cylinder engine is unbelievable. And it's amazing that we live in a day and age where that kind of thing is possible. Um, so I really like the engine. It's smooth, it, it, it's very smooth for a single cylinder. It's not as smooth as a multi-cylinder bike. It's just impossible to be that smooth, but it's very good. And you've seen that throughout the review. The next thing is the suspension. For a stock dual sport motorcycle, this suspension is really very, very good. Is it perfect? Is it like amazing? No. And for really aggressive hard charging riders, and especially if you're heavier or carrying luggage, you might look at a respring and a revalve, I think would bring this up to really high levels. But as it stands, it's very good. And you can ride this bike very, very fast. And it's so far above most of the other uh, budget oriented dual sports that are out there. The next pro to this bike is, if you view it more as the adventure bike, it's very lightweight. It's 100 pounds lighter than the nearest adventure bike, multi-cylinder adventure bike. So that would be something like a Touareg 660 or a Tenere 700 or a KTM 890 Adventure. Those bikes are all at least 100, <coughs> excuse me, 100 pounds heavier than this. So the lightweight is a good thing. Now, we'll get to the con of that later because it's heavier than a dirt bike. Another thing I love about this bike, and you saw this when I was riding it, the electronics are genuinely useful, in my opinion. I love them. I find the traction control to be very, very good, very useful in the dirt when you want to control that 75 horsepower from sliding around too much. On the street, the electronics work very well there too. A couple other pros to this bike is you can do everything with this bike. You could commute on it. You could do some traveling with it. You could do adventure touring. You could use it as a dual sport bike. You could take it on single track. So it's extremely versatile. It's not the best at any of those things, but it can do all of those things. And honestly, that's pretty hard to say about just about any other motorcycle in existence. So what are the downsides to the 690 Enduro? So if you view it from the lens of being an Enduro bike or being a dual sport bike, it's heavy. It's 100 pounds heavier than KTM's own 500 EXC. It's uh, 60 pounds heavier, 70 pounds heavier maybe than a Honda CRF 450 RL. So you get the point. If you view it that way, it's heavy and you do feel that weight. Next thing I don't like, and I touched on this already, the transmission ratios on a 690 have always been wrong and they're still wrong. They're too tightly spaced. Uh, they don't have enough gap between the gears. First gear is really high and sixth gear is not, not as tall as I would like for highway cruising. So I wish they would change the gearbox, change the ratios on this bike. It's always been something that I didn't like. Next downside is, and we looked at this earlier, the bike's very tall. So even for me at five foot 10 or 180 centimeters, I still find this bike to be pretty tall and pretty tippy. And if you're, if you're not a taller person, I, I think honestly, you're gonna have a bit of a hard time with this bike unless you're a really experienced rider. What are some other downsides? Well, again, if you, if you view this through the lens of looking at it as an adventure or travel bike, from the factory, not, not looking at the mods done to this one, from the factory, there's no wind protection. Uh, the fuel tank's kind of small. The seat is like a razor blade up your bum. Uh, you know, I could go on and on. It, it's not a great like traveling bike the way it comes from the factory. And tagging onto that comment, if you want to set it up as an adventure bike, kind of like what's been done here, and this bike has almost everything that I would do to set it up, except maybe that uh, Raid Garage fuel tank, which goes under where the air filter is to add some more fuel range. Everything except that this bike already has. It's expensive. The rally tower alone is $1,500. That's a tough, pill to swallow. 
you get into crash bars, you get into you know lighting, you get into luggage, racks, all that stuff. Yeah, you're gonna have to do that, some of that to any bike, but um, this bike is a lot more to do all that because again, you've gotta add the wind protection if you care about that, which I do, and you've gotta add the fuel range, uh, which is also definitely a factor for me living in the American West where we have long distances between fuel stops. Final thoughts on the KTM 690 Enduro R. This is one of the most challenging motorcycle reviews that I've had to do, and here's why. I don't think I've ever ridden or reviewed a bike that has caused me such mixed or conflicted feelings, and here's what I mean. I think there's two main ways you could approach your opinion to this bike. The first one is that it's really not a very good long distance adventure bike, and it's also really not a very good dirt bike. So that's one way to look at it. Now, if you wanna take the glass half full approach or the more positive approach, you could say that this bike can do everything. It can do some single track. It can do a lot of off-roading. It can do some street riding. It's not gonna be the absolute best of any of those areas, but if you look at the, the performance, the specifications, the power, the weight, and its ability to do all that spectrum of riding with one motorcycle, it's quite incredible and totally unparalleled right now in the motorcycling world. I do think that for most people who are really avid off-road and adventure riders, they're probably gonna be better served by having something like an 890 Adventure or a larger adventure bike for long trips and then having your smaller enduro bike for really hardcore off-roading. But I think there's also a group of riders who are gonna appreciate the all-around versatility of the 690 Enduro, especially if you're looking at it more and if you're gonna set it up more as that super lightweight adventure bike. Now, I really need your collective opinion, your collective input on this. Let's have a discussion about this in the comments because I'm so conflicted. I don't know uh, really the answer about this motorcycle. I don't know the exact conclusion. I think that it's kind of a platform for whatever you want it to be, but I'm really interested to hear your feedback in the comments below about what you think of this motorcycle. Um, would you set it up more as an enduro bike? Would you set it up more as an adventure bike? What are your thoughts about it? I'd really like to know, and I think it'll be a really interesting conversation. So I genuinely hope this review was useful, informative, and entertaining. If it was, please support Big Rock Moto, and there's a lot of ways you can do that in the description below. And of course, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Ride safe, and I'll see you out there.